nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. So welcome to this set of two lectures on thermoelectricity. My name is Mark Lundstrom. I'm going to be giving the first of these lectures about the theory of thermoelectricity. My colleague, Professor Ali Shakuri, will be giving the second lecture, which will focus on thermoelectric devices and systems. So let me just say a few words about wh what this is all about. Uh, thermoelectricity is the basis of a couple of interesting devices. One is a thermoelectric cooler. We can see how this, de this device works. It has an N-type semiconductor leg. It has a P-type semiconductor leg. Current runs through. Uh, the current runs up the N-type leg, across the top, and then down the P-type leg. If you look at the direction that the charge carriers move, they're moving from the top to the bottom. They not only carry charge, they carry their thermal energy at the same time. So that carries thermal energy from the top to the bottom. The top plate gets cold, the heat is dissipated on the bottom, and we've made a thermoelectric cooler. There are lots of act applications for these kinds of devices, cooling infrared detectors, stabilizing laser diodes. You can buy them for picnic coolers, um, automotive applications. A lot of applications, but they tend to be, you know, very distinct niche sort of applications. Another application would be a thermoelectric generator. If we apply heat on the top, the carriers will diffuse away from the heat towards the cooler end on the bottom. When electrons and holes both diffuse down, we have a current flow. We can attach, we can make an external circuit, attach a load like a light bulb here. The current will flow then opposite the direction of the electrons and in the direction of the holes. We've converted heat into electricity. This is a thermoelectric generator. Okay. So the key aspect in devices like this is what is their efficiency? Uh, how, what fraction of the uh, thermal energy that's input can be converted to electrical energy in the output? Um, one application for a technology like this is in remote deep space probes. When you're far away from the sun, you can't use solar cells, photovoltaic systems. Uh, if you have a radioactive heat source that lasts for a long time, you can convert that heat into electricity with thermoelectric generators. So those are two applications of the technology. They've been around for a long time. Uh, the technology was first developed in the late 1940s. This is a picture of a thermoelectric generator that was developed by one of the pioneers of this field, Abram Iafi. Uh, th this system uses a kerosene lamp, and the heat from the kerosene lamp is converted to electricity to power a radio. And that was a technology that was used in Russia around the late 40s and, and early 50s. So it's had a long history. It plays an important role today in, in certain specific niche applications, but it's long been thought that the potential is much broader. There's a potential for much greater impact in the real world. And there's lots of excitement today with recent advances in research that we may be beginning to see that beginning to happen. Well, my colleague, Professor Shakuri, will talk more about devices and systems and efficiencies and those aspects. My focus in this talk is on the underlying theory. These are the set of equations uh, th that are usually presented. There's a set that expresses the electrical current in terms of the electric field and the temperature gradients, and also the heat current in terms of the electric field, which drives a heat current, and the temperature gradient, which also derives a heat current. This is the form of the equations that is most easily derived mathematically. The form that is most easily used, or readily used, commonly used, is shown on the right, where we simply invert them. You'll see that there are five transport coefficients in these equations. There are four electrical and one having to do with the lattice. The four electrical uh, transport coefficients are the electrical conductivity, the electronic thermal conductivity, a coefficient known as the Seebeck coefficient, and a, co a coefficient known as the Peltier coefficient. Now, heat is also transported by the lattice, the vibrating atoms in the material, and there is a lattice thermal conductivity as well. So, 
My goal in this lecture is to try to help you develop some understanding of these four per, five parameters and how they're related to the underlying material parameters. Now, if we talk about the operation of a thermoelectric cooler or a thermoelectric generator, it can be shown, and Professor Shakuri will show you, that when you compute the efficiency of these devices, the efficiency is dependent upon these material parameters in a particular combination that simply reoccurs over and over again. This is a dimensionless figure of merit. We write it here as ZT. It is a material figure of merit. It depends on these five transport coefficients. And the higher this material figure of merit is, the higher the performance efficiency of the device. Today, commercial thermoelectric technology has a figure of a merit of about one. If the figure of merit could be increased to three or four, the potential applications would dramatically increase. Um, and there are recent uh, successes in the laboratory of increasing this material figure of merit which sort of set the stage for technologies that could have much broader applications. Now, one of the problems with this field is that the theory gets a little involved. And my goal is to try to help it make it a little more understandable in this lecture. These are the mathematical equations for the four electrical transport coefficients. The conductivity, the Seebeck coefficient, the Peltier coefficient, the electronic thermal conductivity in two different forms. We'll talk about these equations, but in the standard way of deriving these is from the Boltzmann transport equation. Things can get a little bit complicated. Uh, this quantity sigma prime is known as the differential conductivity. We'll talk more about that later. It is uh, dependent on a parameter here, zeta, which is known as the transport function. The physical interpretation of this thing is not at all clear. It's related to the underlying band structure and the scattering physics. And once you know this parameter, we can compute any of the transport coefficients. Well, that's the mathematical theory. And as I say, um, my goal in this lecture is to try to help um, make this as understandable as possible to people who have a background in semiconductors and semiconductor devices, but little or no background in thermoelectric theory. Now, one of the other things that makes thermoelectrics complicated is that high-performance thermoelectric materials tend to have complicated band structures and uh, phonon structures. This is an example of the energy band structure of bismuth telluride, one of the standard thermoelectric materials. So that further complicates the analysis because the bands aren't parabolic and they can get highly complex. Now I'm going to take a fairly high level view of all of this. We'll walk you through the theory. We'll, we won't show all of the mathematical derivations. For those of you that are interested in the mathematical steps that I'm leaving out and to dive in a little more deeper, I can point you to this uh, paperback book that my uh, colleague Cheng Wook Jung and I wrote a few years ago. And we're going to be following the approach that is in this book, but skipping over, um, you know, taking a big picture view and not going into the mathematical details that are discussed in this book. Now, there's a lot to talk about, and I've broken it up into pieces. So we'll march through. We'll begin by talking about the electrical conductivity, then the Seebeck coefficient, then the Peltier coefficient, then the electronic thermal conductivity. That will complete the four electronic transport coefficients. Then we'll switch to a discussion of the figure of merit for thermoelectric materials, and we'll bring in the lattice thermal conductivity. And then we'll try to wrap it up and, and make all of the conclusions. So we'll go through this step by step, take a break after each step, and uh, by the end, you should have a good understanding of thermoelectric theory.